Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we got an epic debate tonight. Which we have Jim Majors and Gavin, Battle of the Mustaches. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us tonight. So we have a, a last-minute change here. Um, we we're gonna do the <laughs> resurrection, um, and but it, it, we had some miscommunication. So it looks like we're going to be doing. Um, is America a traditional Christian uh, nation, or is it founded on traditional Christian values? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with the format of, um, we're going to start with five to ten minute openings. Approximately it's going to be uh, whatever they need to open with, and then we will go into a f about 45 minute or so open discussion. So with that, um, I guess Gavin, do, uh, you probably want to start it off, but let me just say first, thanks for everybody that's coming out, and we want to make sure that everyone, no matter your background, where you're from, uh, what you believe, we want to make sure that everybody feels welcome here, and uh, so feel free to leave a comment, and um, yeah, this is going to be a cool one, and please hold your questions till closer to the end, that way I can, because uh, I'm operating everything, and that way I can, um, I, I can definitely take the Super Chats at any time. But if you have a question, tag me at Converse Contender because I'll see it there. And uh, just try to wait more toward the end of the debate for the questions if it's not a super chat. So with that, Gavin, you want to get us started? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thanks, CC. Thanks, Jim. And apologies for the, for the mix-up in communication. Um, no worries. So I'm taking the, uh, the affirmative that uh, was America founded on Christian principles – um, I don't. I don't think this is going to be a. <laughs> I don't think this is going to be a dumpster fire of a debate because I, I think Jim and I are going to find that we agree on a lot of things, and there's probably not going to be much, much contention about much. But anyway, we'll see what we can make of it. Um, the first thing is, I mean, even though Christianity is not even mentioned in the Constitution or the Bill of Rights, the founders of of uh, America they were highly influenced by Christian ideas, I, ideals, and ideas. Sorry. Uh, in a lot of significant ways. Number one, the, their faith taught them that humans were sinful, as Jane Madison wrote in Federalist Number 51, if men were angels, no government would be necessary. If angels were to govern men, neither external or internal controls on government would be necessary. This conviction led them to avoid the idiot utopian experience, experiments we saw in France during the French Revolution and to adopt a constitutional system characterised by separated power, checks and balances and federalism. Uh, number two, the Founding Fathers, they firmly believed that God ordained moral standards, that legislation should be made in accordance with these standards, and that moral laws took precedence over human laws. Number three, um, similar, similarly, similarly, I'm tripping over my words, sorry, similarly, Christianity informed the founders' understandings of substantive concepts such as liberty. Um, Barry Shan says uh, he's identified eight different ways in which the word was used in the 18th century. Only one of these is related to the excessively individ individualistic way the term is often used nowadays in the 21st century. Instead, the founders were far more likely to see liberty as, a, as the freedom to do what is morally correct, as illustrated by the United States Supreme Court Justice James Wilson's marvellous dictum, without liberty, law loses its nature and its name and becomes oppression. Without law, liberty also loses its nature and its name and becomes licentiousness. That's a big word. Uh, the Founding Fathers believed that humans were created uh, in the Imago Dei, in the, in the image of God, part of what this means is that humans are reasonable beings. This led them to conclude that we, the people, as opposed to the elite, can order our public lives together through politics rather than force. It also helped inform early and later opposition to antebellum slavery, um, which is very important because in uh, 1860, former uh, Secretary of State and Governor for, Governor for New York, William H. Seward, um, out of the famous phrase, slavery is forbidden under a higher law than the Constitution. And the Christian faith led many founders to conclude that re religious liberty should be extensively protected. Um, yet, uh, uh, 
that's probably enough. That's probably enough, I think. Okay. You want to end with that, I, Gavin? Yeah, that's a that's a pretty pretty reasonable opening. Okay, thanks. Thanks so much for that opening. Uh Jim. Uh yeah, okay. So I, I just want to start off. I was not at all prepared for, for this debate, but I'm more than happy to have it. So forgive me if my uh my opening statement isn't as uh as slightly less awkward than, than it's going to be right now. Um, <laughs> um, so, so in, in first Peter two, it says uh, for servants to obey their masters, uh, to fear them, not just the good and gentle ones, but also the, the, uh, the ones that act to the, uh, to the contrary. Um, and, and it mentioned several other times, um, servants submit yourselves to your, uh, to your masters, wives, to your, to your husbands, children, to your parents, so on and so forth, and and three three times at least, I, I believe, in the, the just in the New check. Testament, this is a, a, a Christian belief. Um, but most of the people who hold your view, they tend to say that it's found on Judeo Christian right. principles, um, not on its theology. Um, but we don't get our uh, our law from religious mm -hmm. law. Um, Thankfully, uh, I, that's okay. that's. A, I just a, wanted to it, let you know. Uh, as close, I, I'm not getting streamed. As I come to saying, I, can what be a I blessing. can do is I can start uh, a that, Zoom that would be one. meeting, and then uh, um, if I have the stream key and, and the URL, I can uh, even use just that. The most fundamental tenets of uh, of Judeo uh, Christian faith, or I the Ten Commandments, and just copy uh, myself. I I would say there's maybe five of the commandments in there, if if that um, that that the majority of the commandments. Um, uh, including the most important one, uh, which got both God says and Jesus says and several other uh, prophets and wise people and old men say that uh, is thou shalt have no other God before me. Uh, the, the first and foremost and most important one that should never be betrayed. Uh, that's not a law in, uh, in the United States. Um, so I, I would say that the United States, like any other ideology, will adopt things that they find good from prior beliefs. It's what the Israelites did with the Babylonian captivity. Um, it's what we do with religion. Um, whenever um, uh, the religious minorities were escaping religious persecution from within Christianity, um, uh, because Christianity became started to become too sectarian and they wanted to rein that in and said, no, you know, this is about freedom of, uh, of our church. We can establish our church wherever we want. It will be our church. We can teach what we want. You know, this is, uh, we, we deserve to, to, uh, have our piece of sanctity and it be just as, um, as, uh, uh, recognized as legitimate by the state as anybody else's. Um, and uh, I would say that the founding fathers also meant f that for lack of faith as well. Um, that's, uh, that's about all I got to say as an opening statement. All right. Perfect. Jim. So sorry, sorry about the interruption, buddy, but thanks so much no for that. So, um, we're going to move to an open discussion now and we'll just let you guys kind of interact. So, um, Gavin, do you want to start us off? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thanks for that, James. That was, that was, uh, an excellent opening discussion, seeing it was off the cuff. So big props to you, buddy. Oh, thanks, man. Um, yeah, yeah. Look, th th there's no question, there is no question that um, in the Bill of Rights or the Constitution, there is no mention of God or Christianity or anything to do with religion. And the Constitution and Bill of Rights, they, they were drawn up in such a way because the last thing the Founding Fathers wanted was a, was a theocracy. That's what the Puritans ran from. You know, they ran from sure. England and the, and the theocracy that was dominating, you know, Church, society. The Church of England. Right. Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. So, so what the Founding Fathers uh, wanted, and I think they were largely successful, is they wanted to promote... Uh, the good principles of Christianity, but they didn't want it to be like uh, state enforced, if you like. They wanted they wanted uh, all citizens of America to have the freedom to mm -hmm. to worship whichever religion they choose. 
they chose, sorry. Um, and they were they were dead set on on um, uh, making avenues and, and encouraging that freedom to pursue whichever religion anybody wanted to pursue. It just mm-hmm. it just happened to be at the time that Christianity was the was the dominant um, religion. You know, there was a there was a bit of influence from Deism, from the Enlightenment, and that sort of thing. But sure. by far, by far and wide, you know, it was Protestantism. Uh, Church of England, that kind of thing. So, look, I, I, I can't, I can't fault what you said, and and you did right. The founding fathers, they wanted religious freedom. They wanted uh, the good things of Christianity um, right. to be part of part of the part of the American well, fabric, I guess, of life. But I, if, I, if I, you were to take those those elements, though, just by themselves, those those good elements that they incorporated into. Uh, the uh, the the founding principles of the country uh, yep. can uh, I mean th- those are not just um, the exclusive to Christianity or to even Judeo Christianity. Um, most of the good things that come from Christianity, uh, Christianity has it because they borrowed it from somebody else. Yep. Right. Yep, so. So with that. with that being said, I mean, I, I would argue that our our entire culture is influenced by things that we hold sacred, uh, beliefs that that we hold um, firmly to. And that's that's what uh, what molds us and what what helps us develop and what um, what our parameters are and, uh, you know, what what limits us. Uh, so, I mean, it. But. But just taking the good things from Christianity, I don't think that limits us to saying, oh, well, we just got this from Christianity. I, I don't think that that's fair to say, and, and especially with the religious diversity that's that's here now. There are a lot of moral principles, um, those things which you would say were um, uh, influenced by Christianity um, in the, uh, the founding principles of the United States um, that we can all agree on, atheist, uh, Muslim, uh, Hindu. Christian, Jewish, whatever, we, we can agree on most everything. We can line up one of each. We can say, is rape bad? Yes. Is rape bad? Yes. Is rape bad? Yes. Go down the line with so many fundamental moral quandaries and and um, moral black and whites uh, that, that we will all agree on. As a matter of fact, that there's there's very little that I think that you and I would uh, would disagree on as far as morality goes, but uh, I, I think it's just really hard to see past that one difference that uh, makes it all seem so much bigger. Yeah. I think because um, just because Christianity was the dominant religion at the time, I don't, I don't think the, the founding fathers would have had much idea of um, religion's history. Mm-hmm. Going back, back and back, um, but I think I think they got it right. I think they got it right, and um, I think that's one of the reasons. Well, okay, it's one of the reasons. It's not the sorry, it's not the the reason, but it's one of the reasons why the USA is such a successful country uh, economically um, in all sorts of ways um, because of that thread that thread of Judeo-Christianity that runs through the fabric of, of American society. But at, at, um, at what point of development did they get it right? Was it at uh, Second Temple Judaism or was it at, uh, at, uh, at Donatist or um, uh, Docetism or, was, uh, or maybe even uh, um, we can go even, even further and say Ro- Roman Catholic or um, uh, Orthodox? Uh, maybe it was um, uh, Calvinism. You know, where, when did, was Christianity at its peak? When was Christianity at its truest? Um, I think the founding fathers got it right from the starting blocks, Jim. I think they started fast and then accelerated. I don't well, think. Well, any... which one? Because most of the founding fathers were uh, um, excommunicated for heresy at some point. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's a that's a fairly popular atheist meme. But it's not actually true. But I think it, yes, it is. yes, it is. I think the founding fathers got it right. I think that, I think they got it right from the start. I mean, you know, without 
we, we had the abolition of slavery, antebellum slavery, slavery, mm -hmm. and um, you know the this this religious Christian, these religious Christian principles, they were embedded and part of the whole um, uh, abolition of antebellum slavery, which is ironic. They were also embedded ironic. in the spread and the justification of antebellum slavery. Sorry. That was also used as justification for oh, slavery. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Right. And some of the founding fathers were actually slave slave, slave owners. They were. So, they were slave owners. So what yeah. we have is is two people looking at the same text and it having such an ambiguous um, uh, um, nature to it that they come across with two different meanings. One says you can't own people, and the other one says buy and sell black people, and. It's like, well, how are we reading the, the same book? We're both Christians. We both believe in the same God. How are we both reading the same book and coming up with these two completely different, um, uh, very important to get right uh, moral yeah. beliefs? Because we're seriously flawed human beings, Jim. But the good news is that in the end, in the end, Christianity was one of the, wasn't the most biggest driving factor, but it was one of the biggest driving factors in the abolition of slavery. Okay. That's like a kid spray painting graffiti all over my fence and then coming back the next day and saying, Hey, I'm painting your fence for you and painting it white, painting over the graffiti. It's like, well, if you didn't crap all over it before, you wouldn't have to fix it now. So, I mean, thanks, I guess. Yeah. Thanks. I guess. That's the, that, that's the immorality of, of seriously flawed human beings, Jim. Right. So when can we know when and if we get it right? I think we can know by, by carefully reading the text. And we've got, we've got the text. An, 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 uh, an embarrassing amount of um, resources uh, by which we can, we can interpret the text correctly. <laughs> Right, but the I, the I, Methodists, I, 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 the, the but the Methodists, the Presbyterians, the Baptists, the Meth, uh, they they all separated because of fundamental differences in the way that they interpreted the text. That's why we have, you know, Southern Baptists. You know, the whole reason Southern Baptists is a thing is because they said, no, I think God wants us to have slaves. Uh, yep. You know, it, it's um, it, so it. What I'm saying is that is that it's a problem that the Bible is so ambiguous. It's not just a couple of people that are getting it wrong. It's enough people that are getting it wrong where we're like, well, which one of us are right? Because it could it could be either one. Yeah, I don't I don't really subscribe to to the to the notion that the Bible is so ambiguous. Yeah, I don't really hold to that. To mm -hmm. be honest, yeah, yeah. And well, look, I'm no. I'm no scholar, Jim. I can't speak Greek or read Greek or ancient Hebrew or anything like that. But I do, I do go to the the experts. I do refer to the to the scholarly experts. It's awesome. Well, I, if, if you were to ask SJ, you know, slavery was awesome. You know, to be a slave was not a bad thing. You know, if you were poor, like that was the thing to do was be a slave. So I mean, I, you know, slavery was good. Like I don't know why everybody's so upset about slavery. You know, it's like you could keep their kids and their wife or, or you could keep them if they wanted to stay with their wife or you could keep them if you got them from the surrounding lands and it wasn't a fellow Hebrew. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it's, it, there's always these justifications and these slips and these little, uh, little moral, um, uh, little platitudes that we, that we give ourselves or little, uh, little yeah. freebies or passes and say, well, it's, it's, it's okay. It's not, it's not as bad as it was, you know? So, you know, we can keep doing it. It's, a, it's the same reason people are justified for um, hating homosexuals. You know, it's like, it's like, well, you know, they used to stone them and we don't stone them now. We just say that we hate them. And we call them queers behind their back. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's not that bad, you know, but it is, you know, and I don't think that that's any thing that I want my kids or anybody else's kids getting, their the, their worldview and and molding them into the way that they interact with the people that I interact with because we are yeah, sure. 
we are the people around us and the people around us are uh, in some ways a product of us. And w w we get out of the world what we put into it. And I don't want to put out pieces of shit, just to put it bluntly. Oh, yeah, look, I agree. I agree. And um, as far as homosexuality is concerned, look, the Bible sees it as sinful, but it's no more sinful than stealing or committing adultery with somebody else's wife, okay? It doesn't go into some sort of special demonic category, which means you're going to be tortured for a million years um, until you can't stand any longer. Uh, and as far as slavery goes in the ancient Near East, uh, God regulated rules for the slave owners and for the slaves. Slaves had rights, which is something quite unheard of. But, but, would, but right, rights or not, they had they were slaves, right? Like you, yeah. you acknowledge that yeah. they, they were possessions. Abs well, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right. But the, no, no, no matter what you say after that, no matter what comes after the comma, nothing makes up for that. Nothing. Well, it kind of does because um, they, were, they, were, they weren't, they weren't prisoner of war camps in the A&E. So prisoners that were captured as a result of, Israelite victory. They had to do something with them. They, they were also taken. Them. They're also taken from their families. Um, they were. I mean, they could have left them there. Yeah, they could have. They could have. <laughs> but no, but they couldn't they have because in those in those cases where um, uh, where God illicitly tells them to, um, it, it's to wipe the land of a certain race of people or a certain. Um, people with a certain mindset, you know, it's 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 this us versus them mentality and that we're more powerful because we have God on, on our side. And therefore, because God's on our side, everybody else is wrong and they're the enemy and they just need to be crushed. And that's a harmful mindset, very harmful mindset. Yeah, you're and, taking and me down. One second, guys. You're taking just for the people who just came in, we actually had a change of topic tonight. Uh because of some miscommunication. So we are actually talking about the, did um, America have, uh, was it founded on Christian values? Go ahead, Gavin, sorry. Yeah, well, Christian principles. principles yeah, yeah. yeah Jim, <laughs> I can see you're taking me down the sky of fiction road to the Malachites, but that's not really the topic. Um, if you're a slave in the A&E, you had, okay, being a slave is not so cool. But being a slave of an Israelite was a hell of a lot better than being a slave of, uh, you know, an Egyptian or, or some other slave of another nation. At least you had recognisable human rights. Babylonian slavery saying, was was pretty decent. Yeah, but I'm not saying I'm not saying that slavery was cool. It wasn't so cool. But, 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 uh, but what are you saying? That slavery is what? I'm saying. I'm saying Slaves, the Israelite slaves, they had human rights. They had human rights. Right. But, but if you were going to make one of two statements and say uh, slavery is good or slavery is bad, which, which statement would you make? Well, it's, it's not a dichotomous question. It, okay. It's not a dichotomous question because it depends. If if you're a, an enemy and you're captured, you're a, you're a POW. You're a prisoner. What is an enemy? An enemy because in those days, in, in once you start saying that that there are enemies, then you yourself become an enemy, and you should. Uh, um, and if you're not subject to those same rules, then there, you need to step outside of that picture and examine it. Because you're, what you're saying is that you are better than everyone else, even though that you're granting at the same time that all these other people are creations created from the same God with the same material, but because they're born in different families and they're born in different parts of the world, they're n not as good as I am or as important as I am. Therefore, their life is worth nothing. I will rip the babies out of their stomachs, you know, it, uh, dash them on the rocks. I, I will, you know, kill every living thing, even the animals, because that's how much I, we, we hate them and how, how, uh, how filthy they've, they've made, uh, they made this land and, and we can only purify it by, by getting the, 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 the pagan scum off of it. Are we still talking about the A&E? 
ancient Near East. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's that's what God that's what God wanted His chosen people to do. Okay, if I'm I'm going to kind of be your mom now, but if if God told you to jump off a roof, would you do it? If God told me to jump off a roof, yeah, like His audible voice. I don't know. Whatever would be convincing to you if God told you to jump off a roof. I don't know. However you want to imagine it. I have no idea. I have no idea. Right, but but probably not, right? Like you would have to think for hard about it for sure, right? Even though you believe in God. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, but, but yeah, so we have we're talking about, about people who are who feel justified in killing other people and their families. And, and this, we're not just talking about men who sign up to go to war, men who are paid to, to fight on the battlefield, but people who are hiding in their homes and getting torched and raped and taken into slavery. And no matter how, how many rights they have, the, the fact of the matter is they, they are robbed of their identity, their family, uh, everything that they were, they no longer are. Yeah, so we, we got a few people in the chat asking if this is uh, actually re um, how relevant this is to America. Uh, yeah, that's that, well, I, I, we'll... It's, it's very relevant. Um, we, I guess that is one of the bad Christian principles that we've inherited is that we need to think, we think that we need to stick our nose in everybody else's business and everybody else needs to think the same way that we do. And if and, and if you don't think the same way that I do, well, then you are my enemy. You are fake news. You are, you are the bad guy, and I will do whatever I have to, to stop you, even at my own demise. I don't think that. I, I think that is America's mindset as a whole. Well, it's not, mine. it's not my mindset. Well, that's 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 good. CCU it's a, be better it's a relief. Coming on, coming on American uh, Christian mentality. Yeah, and, and I'm sorry I went off on that rabbit trail. Like I said, I wasn't prepared for this no, this okay. debate at all. No, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine, Jim, because I because I'm really I'm really um, cognizant of the fact that you were preparing for another debate. So <laughs> don't worry so about it. Maybe there's a few uh, maybe there's a few things in, in American values or principles today, like separation of church and state or like, you know, other values that America has that you, that you guys would probably disagree over with it. So, um, okay. Well, are there anything that you think, uh, uh, you agree that that would be considered a Christian principle that, uh, that you think I wouldn't agree with? So, uh, like a value you know, or, or an ethic to instill well, upon the society. To, to be honest, Jim, I don't, I don't think, off the top of my head, I can't think of a Christian principle that you would, you would, you would push back against quite firmly. I'm trying to think of one, but to be honest, I can't. I can't think of one. Yeah. I think I think only good can come from from Christian principles. It's 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 been shown historically. If uh, you remember how we were talking about the, the the Ten Commandments and whether or not they uh, they all apply to the legislature or not. Oh, okay. The so, the so, so, uh, so imagine you're you're a founding father. You can take ten principles of Christianity, um, going by what the founding fathers did, um, implementing things for Christianity and. Um, uh, and what you would do, you know, what what would you do different? Are there are there anything from Christianity that you would add that they didn't, um, or is there anything that you would um, uh, that they implemented from Christianity that you would take out? No, no. To be honest, Jim, I think I think they got it spot on, and and they they thought about this and they discussed this and they had they debated ad nauseum over this. But I think they got it pretty right. I think they got it pretty right, given the fact, given the fact that society is full of seriously flawed people like me and CC. You know, well, they're probably well, the most serious flawed human well, beings out there. But, but I think they got, it, I think they got it pretty right from from the start. But I, I think, I, I think, uh, okay. So let, let's say, even though you may be right, I think it's important not to hold to that 
viewpoint dogmatically because I mean there's a reason why there's a three fifths compromise. Um, you know, there's there's a reason that um, uh, that there's uh, that there was an emancipation proclamation. There's a re uh, reason that a lot of these things were were implemented uh, after the founding fathers um, uh, established the the, uh, the the foundational uh, principles for this country. So yes. I, I, I think it's important that we be open to change and open to um, reassessing our uh, uh, our worldview as often as necessary. And I can't disagree with that, Jim. I can't disagree with that. I think, I think those two commandments that Jesus distilled down to two, you know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your might, and love the Lord, I uh, love your neighbor as yourself. They're very, very mm -hmm. universal, very universal. Yeah, but and, not original um, to Christianity. Well, like I say, they're very universal, and mm -hmm. I think we could do well to cling to those pretty, pretty, pretty closely. I think. Yeah, yeah. The, the uh, things like the Golden Rule; those go back to like the the uh, the fifth, sixth century uh, BCE. Yes, yes. yes. I, I don't disagree with you. Yeah, but I think that it's that uh, it's a good thing whenever we implement things that we uh, uh, that we we can we can realize and acknowledge that as a whole we agree that these things are good and that the and that investing in these things and investing in these things in our society is a good thing. So we should do that, and we should get together more often and put our heads together and decide. You know, hey, is, is this is still good, right? Or is there is it starting to look bad? Do we need to fix it? Is there something we need to add to it? Is there something that, um, you know, yeah. let's 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 mess with it. Let's talk about it. Let's never yeah. get stagnant into thinking that we at any time hold a monopoly on morality. Yeah, yeah, like I agree. And the founding fathers, they were very strong on discussing religion in the public square. They were very encouraging of that principle. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's like I said, my friend, I actually wrote down in big blue letters and pen on my pad here, be, 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 be benevolent, be benevolent to my, to my learned colleague, Jim Majors, because the topic was sprung on you like at the last minute. So you know, <laughs> you've, got, you've got exceptionally well. If it was well, me, I'd be, my, I'd be tripping over my tongue and I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm I, 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 I'm a lot stronger in biblical arguments, so I I'll be honest. It, you know what? Thirty minutes ago, or whatever, five five minutes before the debate started, I, I got a little nervous. I'll be honest. <laughs> oh, you, you don't you don't, have, you don't have to. I'm just a beginner, Jim. I'm just I'm just feeling my way through this whole thing. Well, well good deal. Feel feel free to sit down anytime. <laughs> Yeah, I'll tell you what, though, you, you, you did write about coming together and having public discourse about subjects. Yes, and, um, and, and, and never saying this is bad all the time or this is good all the time and it can never change. You know, that, that, that's dangerous. Absolutely. absolutely. Look, coming, coming together and having public discourse about something, even if you're on both sides of the fence, let's take the theist and the atheist. They come together... They have a discussion. They keep it respectful and they keep it reasonable. Now, the very worst thing that can come out of that discussion is that both sides are going to leave knowing a little bit more about the other side's ideology and the way the other side thinks yeah. about things. And that's yeah. a good thing. That's a and, really good thing. And hopefully, and uh, and it's my my favorite takeaways from those types of conversations is whenever you learn something about your own worldview. Yep. Oh, definitely, absolutely. Can't I can't I can't fault that at all. But I'm I'm a big proponent of of uh, debates and even the YouTube chat can get a bit grossed out sometimes. But occasionally you get these gems and and it's people who who want to debate something and they're happy to mm -hmm. do it in a reasonable and respectful manner, even if they're on the other side of the fence from you. Because I think I think theism and atheism is always going to be like fenced off. 
But there's no reason why we can't put a gate in there somewhere and we can't be reasonable, yeah. we can't be rational, you know, we can't be respectful towards each other. At the very least, we're going to learn something and that's it, what it's about. If we were to take those principles, everything that, that we find to be good about Christianity and we were to mold them into one ideology and give it, you know, give it identity, give it a form and, and, uh, and you know, some, some sort of an, an establishment, uh, how similar would that be to, to something like secular humanism? Um, like, do, do you think it would differentiate at all from that, I guess is what I'm trying to ask? I think so, yeah, I, I think so, Jim. And, and the only reason I say that is because um, I might be wrong. And, look, I'm open to being wrong, mm -hmm. um, and I'll say that from the outset. But it seems to me that that secular humanism doesn't doesn't hold to any ultimate or higher authority than man, um, and I think that once man puts himself at the level of a god or or the ultimate authority, mm -hmm. then I think that really throws the seeds for chaos and and malevolent disorder. We've yeah. seen we've seen that throughout history. We've seen that especially in the twentieth mm -hmm. century. So so of course. You know, I, I lean towards Christianity um, for so many things, but one of the major things is that I know there is God. You can call him whatever you like. You can call him Beetlejuice. I don't care. Mm -hmm. But there's, there is someone who is higher, who is higher than man, who ultimately I'm going to be accountable to. So now, a, without, a, a deity. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so without that, that uh, accountability, Oh, I, I just think there's just too much room, too much w wiggle room for, for malevolent disorder and chaos. Who takes accountability? Sorry? Who has accountability in that case whenever you're getting your, your moral inclinations from this someone? Who's, who is morally responsible for the, the, the consequences of, of that morality? Um, like, let, let's say... Um, that God one day for, for whatever reason decides to change his mind and say one day, uh, murder is okay now. And then all of a sudden everybody's murdering. Um, you know, does that make it good? You know, it, um, do, where do we, do, where do we draw the line? I don't think, I don't think God, I don't think it's, it's part of God's intrinsic nature to say murder is good. Do you think it's in God's intrinsic nature to, um, punish homosexuality by murdering them by stoning them to death. That's that was um, an Old Testament way of doing things, R right? Thank but it was dictated it. by God. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. But thankfully, thankfully, Jim, we're not under that old covenant now. We're under the of course, new covenant. Of course, yeah. but when we were but, under it, was it moral? Sorry. When, when we were under it, though, was it moral? So, in other words, back in the old days, let's say back yeah. back, back whenever we, they were under that covenant and they found somebody in the acts of homosexuality, they had two or more witnesses, yeah. they drug them both out of the city gates and they yeah. stoned them yeah. both to death until they, they stopped moving. Um, is that moral or is that immoral? in that context well yeah look I, I understand what you're saying if if we're looking at it through through the lenses of 21st century society i think we can we can uh say oh that's a bit tough mm -hmm. but then you know we're talking about a high context society back in back in um the the, the pentateuch and, that, mm -hmm. and we're, we're looking at context society from a low context society in the 21st sure. century right but, I'm, but I'm not you, trying to avoid you no 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 i don't i, I completely understand but but I, I i think essentially what you're trying to get at is that god doesn't change but rather society changes and their view of these uh these actions change right um i'm not i'm not so um enamored with this whole thing of god doesn't change mm -hmm. I, I certainly think god changes his mind 
I certainly think God mm. changes his mind, but his intrinsic qualities, um, you know, of love, I think that's that's perennial. That That's unchanging. That's it, unchanging. If God changes his mind, isn't that evidence that he's not uh, omniscient in that he would have known that that would not be the uh, the – the right response and to respond to it right the first time. So he, in other words, he would never make a mistake because that, that's, that's essentially what changing your mind is, is realizing that you were wrong about a, 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 a diversion, uh, a, uh, a, um, a split in the path that you took and you went the wrong way. I'm, I'm talking about God changing his mind. Um, mm -hmm. and an example would be, at the, at the insistence of Lot, you know, God was going to wipe out every living thing in Sodom right. and Gomorrah. Right, unless they can find Lot, 50. Lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So that, 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 would, that would be an example to me of God changing his mind. And also, mm -hmm. also um, I, think, I think it's important to – I think it's important to say that, that I think God, um, because he's omniscient, he exists in the past, the present right now, and he also exists in the future. So he knows the future in terms of what will happen, what should happen, what could happen. So he knows all possible outcomes. And um, there's a good scripture in the Old Testament with um, David David and his 600 men coming to the town of Kyla mm -hmm. and David praying to God and saying, and you'll know this, Jim, David praying to God and saying, if I stay here overnight, will um, we'll Saul uh, capture the town and will the town's inhabitants hand me over to Saul? And God right. said, yes, if you stay here, if you and your men stay here, you will be captured by Saul and his army. So David up sticks and took off. He left with his army. So that's, that's God looking into the future, seeing what would happen if David stayed in the town of Kyla and so mm -hmm. saying to David, look, this is what's going to happen if you stay here. So David, but, okay, we're out of here. We're off. But, but the the problem with that is that some of these uh, these changing his minds come as a part of of God's will changing, and and our uh, our entire purpose. Um, most Christians believe. I assume that you believe is to ultimately fulfill God's God's will to to play your part in in God's will just as Judas did as Pharaoh did um, as uh, you know Moses any, anybody else um, uh, fulfilling God's will whatever that may be but whenever you have a will that is uh, malleable that that can that can change uh, all of a sudden uh, that makes my purpose and your purpose much less insignificant than it even was before because now we are uh, our purpose is dependent on something that can change at a moment's notice i think i think the intrinsic fundamental uh properties of god are uh unchangeable but uh, we certainly have free will we certainly have free will to choose whatever mm -hmm. path we want to choose So we have like the you mean like the will or we have free will to whether or not we're going to um, pursue the will of God um, or to to go against it. Absolutely, absolutely, we have free will. We have free free will to do anything, Jim. But what about in in uh, in heaven? Once we've we've achieved the and fulfilled the the will of God, um, are we? Is there is there free will in heaven? Um. I would think so. I would think so. So, the, and then you, then ooh, that, follow, that that sin would be in heaven, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then your next question is going to be: So, can we sin in heaven? Right. Um, <laughs> uh, when heaven I, is our, our our reward, it's it's kind of like yeah, double jeopardy. It's like oh, I've already been to court, Your Honor. Like you can't yeah, get me on yeah. this again. <laughs> look, look. Probably, and this this is just my belief. I mean, I'm I'm not saying this is scripture or anything, but. But probably we can sit in heaven. But you know, would we want to? Would we want to eat dog turd? I mean, no. Like if uh, if if I woke up and somehow I was in heaven and he was like, "Oh yeah, you made it." And I'm like, "Really?" As an atheist, I made. It. He's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're fine. You're fine. Whatever. Uh, you just got to eat dog shit every day." Uh, I'd be like, "Whoa." <laughs>
<laughs> like what? <laughs> yeah. Jim, Jim, if we bumped into each other in heaven, I'd say, "Whoa, Jim, you were wrong." But I'm really glad to see you. <laughs> I would be wondering why there was dog shit in heaven, though. I mean, right? No, no. What I'm what I'm saying is, um, I, I I'm just trying to draw draw uh, an analogy between eating eating dog poop and sinning in heaven. I don't. I think personally, I don't think we'd want to sin. Mm-hmm. Like we want to eat dog poop. Well, as a as a Christian, you don't want to sin, right? Uh, well, <laughs> uh, no, I don't want to sin, um, Jim. But right. I'm full of it. I'm full right. of it, like everyone else. Right. So, uh, are are you saying that as an angel that you could that you can uh, be immune to the temptation of sin? Don't know. Don't know. Hope I can find out. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Well, now, well, in, uh, when, when you say free will, do you mean that you can do, um, you, you can act outside of the will of God? Here on earth. Okay. So, so you can do something that God does not will you to. Like he, he, he does not want you to do this. But you, you can do it anyways. You mean here on earth, Jim? Right. Well, sure. Yeah, oh, we have- our, our, well, earth, heaven, if we have free will in heaven, I'd expect the same thing. Yeah. Well, if, if we're talking about here on earth, you know, we have we have free will. Yeah, we have libertarian free will. Do we have free will in hell? And where? In hell? Don't know. Hope I never have to find out. Hmm. All right, so uh, we we got um, we've been rolling for for almost an hour now. We, uh, what we'll do is probably just take about um, let's take about another ten minutes and, and try to uh, you know draw together some of the threads of this conversation. Let's uh, t- <laughs> let's talk about a couple of laws that you think um, either add to your side or maybe are against the other side. So laws that. America was founded on or principles that, that uh, America was founded on that you think would either contribute to your side more or go directly against the other side, whoever wants to start. And we'll just kind of use that as a tool to start wrapping up over the next 10 minutes or so. My favorite one is just pure and simple. There is to be no official test of, of religion by the state. Um, that's that just about covers it all. To me. Okay, I'm sorry. One more thing before you answer, Gavin. Um, if you want to get a question into the um, to either of the the debaters here, just tag me in it at Converse Contender. Um, I'll post in the chat so you can see my name there, and uh, just uh, send me your question, and I'll be sure to ask. The, uh, we're going to set aside at least 20 minutes for questions. So go ahead, Gavin. Yeah, sure. And if, if those in the chat, if you can just be a bit. Um... A bit charitable towards my learned colleague. He he didn't know it was going to be a debate about was America founded on Christian principles. Um, so uh, yeah, be kind to my friend. I think um, I think one thing, one one really important thing to come out of of uh, the uh, the Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights was that the, the family fathers, they believed um, in what's co- colloquially called uh, the law according to, uh, sorry, the rule according to higher law, the rule according to higher law. Um, and this is often, this is uh, sometimes called the divine law or the natural law, but uh, you can just Google the rule according to higher law. And this is like an international legal process that supersedes the sovereign law of any nation in the world whatsoever. Um, it's, it's, no, mm. it's, it's first well, who, who, but, but who enforces uh, that? Sorry? Who enforces that if it's an international law? Well, it would be whoever the authority is, is in charge at the time. And I'll just, I'll come to that <clears> shortly. I'll come to that shortly. But this law, this this rule according to higher law, was first introduced into, into post-Roman Europe by the canon, uh, Catholic canon jurists. So you know, obviously, obviously, we know where they got their their law and their principles from. They got it straight from the Bible. 
But the two, the two kind of really notable occurrences when this law was invoked, and it, it's still an invocable law today, was, like I said earlier, um, in 1860 when former Secretary of State and Governor of New York, William H. Seward, said uh, he proclaimed that um, slavery, this is just before the Civil War broke out, he said slavery is forbidden under a law higher than the Constitution. And that was quite a, quite a famous phrase he, he, he was coined with. Also, the, the rule according to higher law was invoked in 1946 at the Nuremberg trials when the Nazi war criminals were um, being tried for war crimes. The Nazi defence um, had, a, had a point. They had a point when they said to the, to the Allied judges, look, our clients are not guilty of anything because at the time they were acting in accordance with German law or military German law. Um, and they had a point. They had a point because, because yeah, the Nazis were acting under, under, under German law. But the Allied prosecutors, they successfully kind of circumnavigated this by appealing to the rule according to higher law, which is also known as the divine law or, or the natural law. So it seems to me the founding fathers got it right. They stuck pretty close to the rule according to higher law. They stuck pretty close to the divine law, to the natural law. And, um, yeah, big, uh, big, big applause for them. I think, I think they had a difficult task to do because they didn't want a theocracy, Jim. They didn't want a theocracy. They didn't want anything like the Vatican or like the Church of England in, in, in the UK or Roman Catholicism or anything like that. But they definitely wanted to encourage, encourage the principles of Christianity, but also have a separation of state and church. And I think they did it quite, quite well, quite successfully. All right, thanks so much for that, Gavin. Uh, Jim, do you have any response for that um, about the uh, the Nazis and the Nuremberg trials, as far as how they handled that? Uh, I. I don't like Nazis, don't like talking about Nazis, don't like arguments that involve Nazis. So I'd just as soon as uh, just give my, uh, my, my closing statement. <laughs> All right, perfect. Godwin's Law. So it's, a, it's a must. It, it never fails. All right, so how about this? Yeah, we'll just take a couple minutes apiece and, and give your, uh, your closing. You want to start, uh, Jim? Uh, sure. Um, so simply, uh, the, uh, the highest law, according to the Bible – is thou shalt have no other gods before me. But thankfully, um, uh, thanks to the First Amendment, uh, the Constitution of the United States of America, um, we are guaranteed the right to worship whatever God or no God or as many gods as we want um, without consequence. Uh, we, uh, there is no law saying that we can't work on Sundays or Saturdays or um, whatever you interpret the Sabbath to be, um, we can say what we want about uh, somebody else's religion uh, and uh, not go to jail for it, thanks to the First Amendment. Um, we can engrave an image uh, and we can make it holy and it's no problem. Uh, let's face it, not all of our moms and dads are the greatest. We don't have to honor them. The, they, the law will not come by and lock us up if we don't honor our mother and father. Um, the, uh, I, I have a cop who lives down the road. Uh, my uh, Last summer, my neighbor's wife was out uh, in jean shorts and a bikini top and washing her car, and uh, I decided that was a good time for me to wash my car too. Um, and cop drove by and didn't arrest me, even though I'm pretty sure I was breaking one of those commandments. Um, but it, it doesn't matter because while we may have adopted principles that are, uh, um, that are a part of Judeo Christian, uh, uh, religion, it, it in itself is not the religion. Um, it, it's not the supernatural presumptions. It's it, what they are. They are universal um, things that, that we can, for the most part, agree on. Uh, there are some of us who will disagree, and that's um, we might find something moral at one time and not in another culture. Like 
cannibalism or slavery or child sacrifice or what have you. Um, and, and again, that that is why it's also important to remain vigilant and to not allow any sort of dogmatism to creep up when it comes to um, assessing not only your morality, but uh, your society's morality. All right. Thanks so much for that, uh, Jim. Now, uh, Gavin, you want to take maybe a minute or two to give a brief uh, closing statement? Yeah, sure, sure. That's a good closing, Jim. Um, so did America have a Christian founding? Um, I don't think it's really a dichotomous question that has a yes or no answer because history is complicated. And we should always be suspicious of simple answers to difficult questions, which is why I agreed with my learned colleague about we should have, be having public discourse about these things and hashing them out in a reasonable and responsible manner. Um, there's, there's, there is some evidence that some of the founders were deists, but it, it's very few. It's very few of them. The majority were, were just orthodox mainline Christians. Um, what do these facts mean for Americans who, who embrace non-Christian faiths or, non or, or have no faith at all? Um, although the founders were, were profoundly in influenced by Christianity, um, they didn't want to design a constitutional order that was only for like a, an elite or like for a chosen few, okay? Um, they explicitly... They, they, they explicitly, they explicitly, thanks for that, Jim, they explicitly prohibited um, religious tests for federal officers, officers as in, you know, holding the office of uh, uh, chairman of the water board sort of thing. Um, and they were committed to the proposition that all men and women should be free to worship God or not, or not if they wish to, um, as, as their own consciences, consciences dictated. Uh, so, one hundred percent, the Bill of Rights, and what's the other one? The Bill Declaration of, of Independence. What's the other one? The Declaration. Uh, the of Constitution. Yeah, Constitution. Constitution. Yeah, Constitution and Bill of Rights. Uh, the, the Constitution and Bill of Rights are silent, silent about God, religion worship, prayer, anything like that. But they were silent about that for a reason, and the reason was they wanted every man or woman or child to be able to worship should they want to according to their conscience. They didn't want to have a state-controlled religion, and I think that was a really, really great, great thing they came up with. So, again, I come back to the, the fact that one of the... I, 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 I'm sorry, but I, 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 I'm sorry, but I'm sorry, I... But I can't. I, I have to. the 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 Bill of Rights, the, the the First Amendment in the Bill of Rights, is the freedom of religion. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Jim, Jim, I think he said that, yeah. that they didn't have anything explicitly religious in it. Oh, I thought you said he didn't mention religion. Oh, sorry. Sorry if I wasn't. Oh, clear. okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, okay. I'll, I'll yeah, say. I, 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 I hate interrupting, but I gotta. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Feel free. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine, Jim. Um, I, what I, possibly what I meant to say was that the Bill of Rights and the Constitution they, they were silent about religion and about worship, um, about prayer, about God, and all that kind of thing on purpose, on purpose. And uh, one of, as I said before, one of the reasons it's not the only reason, but one of the reasons why America is such a flourishing country and a world leader, a world economic power. It's because of that freedom to worship or not, to worship or not. And I think they did a, they did a really good job, now, really good job. Let's be honest. Uh, America, the, the original colonies, it was, it was famine. It was disaster. They were worse off here than they were in England. People were dying off left and right. The an entire Roanoke colony went missing uh, um, just over a span of, of, of some years. Uh, but what really helped – was whenever mostly the uh, the Jews in, in terms of trading, but Judeo Christians as a whole began justifying the Atlantic slave route. That's whenever the uh, economy really kicked off. Um, that's a fact, Jim. 
But uh, the economic success of the U.S. today is not due to antebellum slavery. Oh, sure it is. It's a direct inheritance. All right. Uh, maybe we'll uh, we'll end it there. Um, do you guys? I guess. Uh, do you guys have about twenty minutes or so for for Q and A? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Sure. Fair. Yeah. Sure. All right. Let's go into the. Um, Let's go into the Q&A now. We'll start with the uh, Super Chats that we had up front. Um, we had a, quite a few. Um, let's see. All right. <laughs> and thank everyone for your contributions. It's going to a good cause. It, uh, also, consider, if you're not already, um, becoming a patron to Modern Day Debate because um, James has done a great thing here to bring uh, being, being kind of a, a bridge between over troubled waters, we'll say. <laughs> so, go ahead. I, I will donate twenty dollars if you don't read any of Stephen Steen's. <laughs> I don't have. I would say I yes, but I don't have clearance <laughs> to make that call. <laughs> I will. Do, I will donate fifty bucks if you don't read any of Brian Stevens. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brian's nice. I like Brian. Oh yeah. Uh, well. Again, I don't have the I don't have the altitude to make these calls, so I'm gonna have to go with what we got here. All right, make an executive in CC. Yeah. Well, matter of fact, we're starting off with Steven Steen. Thank you so much for your two dollars <laughs> super chat, Jim. Bested by Gavin. R.I.P. <laughs> oh, come on, that's unkind. Fire shots, Jim. No, it, it was. I, I'd say it was a strong draw. Yeah. Oh, so, so yeah. I'd be happy with a draw, Jim. Yeah, I'd be happy with a draw. All right, so we've got somebody new next. Steven Steen, thank you so much for your other $2 super chat. says, Gavin is unstoppable. <laughs> <laughs> um, next, SJ I Thomas. Didn't, funny, I, didn't, I didn't know that your crack dealer worked on Tuesdays. <laughs> <laughs> next up, SJ Thomason, thank you so much for your $10 super chat. Very generous. Hey, hey, SJ says, how do we come to value equality and meekness as sacred in the ancient Near East when they routinely dis, uh, disposed of the infant women and considered the poor cursed by the gods? Well, desire for reciprocation. I mean, and it wasn't that they uh, that they felt any anything less for for the child but it was it was hard living i mean i don't know if you've read some of some of the accounts like in in first kings uh that they they got to a point where they had to decide which child they were going to eat first and which child they were going to eat next because the famine was was that bad people were uh were raising rats and selling rats um it, it was uh it, it was an awful time to live so i mean i don't think that we can uh go and throw any uh, um, ethical stones in this uh, proverbial glass house. All right. Thanks so much for that That's response, Jim. Uh, That's a good point, Jim. Next, we have Stephen Steen, another $2 super chat. Thank you so much for that, Stephen Steen. Says, SJ living in Jim's head, rent-free. <laughs> always, I think always. She, she, she you, has a little, uh, yeah, she's got a nice little one-bedroom studio overlooking the ocean. <laughs> I think it's because you brought her over earlier. <laughs> this was early on when he sent that in. All right. Um, next, we have Iron Charioteer says, Converse, can you ask Gavin, uh, why is it recorded that the founding fathers were mostly deists and wanted separation between church and state to prevent a theocracy? Freedom of and from religion. The, the founding fathers weren't, were not, were not, Mostly deists. They were mostly fundamental Christians. Mm, well, I, I would say most of them were Protestant sectarians, but I believe that uh, that quite a few of them were um, uh, were deists. I guess it would be uh, the, the best term for them. All right. Thanks so much for those responses. Uh, Brian Stevens with a Patreon comment says, Jim is winning this debate with his eyes closed. You know, at first I didn't realize what he was saying, Jim, but it looks like actually your video has been frozen. I'm not sure why. Both of ours is working <laughs> fine, but it looks like yours huh. 
is is froze. No, Gavin, your yours is good and mine's good for some reason. It's got Jim's video, but it's like a still frame. So I, I'm actually working on uh, my ventriloquism. So. Okay, I was about to say it. It actually is, looks like a blue steel pose, and so <laughs> <laughs> you have like a great, uh, at least it's catching my good side. Yeah, and it's got like a perfect little twirl on your mustache and everything. So nice, yeah, nice. Awesome. Yeah, screenshot that shit. Yeah. So <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Jim, you win the battle of the mustaches, no contest. <laughs> oh, man, yeah, I, I'll, I'll, I'll take that trophy. So thanks so Thank much, you, Brian that. Stevens, for your uh, for your Patreon question there. Um, next we have Kill Doggy one Can you ask Gavin? Oh, jeez. <laughs> what? <laughs> what a name. <laughs> or Kilo Doggy one um, oh. <laughs> <sorry. laughs> uh, <laughs> Says, Gavin... Uh, is it important to make people feel guilty for sinning? No. No, I don't think so. All right. Thanks so much for that yeah. answer. Next we have Onus says, Converse, can you ask Gavin what principles of Christianity, uh, what principles Christianity has, please? What? The question is, what principles does Christianity have? Yes. I guess we're referring directly to the positive ones that they uh, they ad adopted yeah. into the Constitution. It sounds like you're begging the Christian Christian. Love the Lord your God with all your mind, all your heart, all your soul. Love your, love your neighbor as yourself. But it doesn't say anything about loving God. I just said love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, yeah, all your that, soul. And, and that's absent. That's absent in the, in the, uh, in the legislature. In the Bill of Rights and the proclamation, uh, uh, in the Bill of Rights and the Constitution, yeah, it doesn't say anything yeah. about about having one God, um, uh, not having any other God before me, just worshiping this one God, this specific God. Yeah. It's not, not it's not just yeah. saying be a monotheist. It's saying be a a Yahwehist. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, Jim. No, uh, the, this guy was he actually wasn't asking what um. What principles does Christianity have in America? He was just kind of making like a kind of like a snide, like, "What principles does Christianity have?" <laughs> you know. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's well, why I, started, I got the beginning kind of question. All right. There's something called Google you can check out. All right. So, Kill Doggy, uh, Kilo, Kilo Doggy One again says, uh, "Nope, I'm sorry." Iron Charioteer says, "Ask Gavin, are some forms of slavery good?" Personally, I don't think so. All right. Thanks so much for that answer, Gavin. Iron Charioteer once again says, Ask Gavin, does he think that the church fathers should have listened to Marcion uh, when he wanted to get rid of the Old Testament? You would have to deal with questions. You would. He said you would have to deal with questions about slavery, but I think he means you wouldn't have to. Yeah, sure. No, I think the the... Founding Fathers did an excellent job. Hmm. All right. Thanks so much for that. We'll move on to... Uh, doo -doo -doo. Steven Steen. Question for Jim. Where are your pants? It's your mom's <laughs> house. <laughs> Steven Steen, you asked for it. Next we have Kilo Doggy One again. Gavin, what percentage of people... Who call themselves Christians will make it into heaven. Please read my question <laughs> word for word. So I had to read that last part. Okay. So my answer word for word is I don't know. Only God knows. All right. Thanks so much for that answer, Gavin. Looks like we have another question for you from Iron Cherry 2. Uh, yeah, that was a correction. You would not have to deal with questions about slavery. Okay. So he says, um, ask Gavin, why do you adhere to the Old Testament laws when it was invented by Jews? I don't adhere to the Old Testament laws. All right. Thanks so much for that correction, Gavin. Hmm. Uh, Brian Stevens says, Jim is doing so well, even with his eyes closed. I think I already read that one, didn't I? <laughs> he, he reposted it. Read it again, CC. 
Jim is doing so well, even with his eyes closed. All right, next Jim's week. Winning. It's, it's a good thing you guys can't see me blushing. <laughs> no, he's winning, he's winning it in the shot here. He's a hit on all judges' scorecards. So next we have Onus says, Can you tell Gavin that natural law comes from Greek philosophy, not Christianity, please? Yes. Yes. Yes, you can tell me that if you like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we got a question for Jim from Kilo Doggy One. It says, Jim, is there any is there anything about love that is counterintuitive to an evolutionary worldview? Is love nothing more than our, our than a benefit to our own survival? Um, maybe not love, but maybe romanticism. I, I think romanticism is is uh counter to our um uh our our tendencies to to survival but i think that we've reached a stage an evolutionary stage where we can let go of the the uh constant need to survive and we can start um focusing on uh creature comforts and other amenities wi-fi and things like love that are fun to think about but uh difficult to um uh, ever actually um, uh, materialize. All right. Brian Stevens says, Converse, Gavin was a pleasure tonight, but Jim's mustache won the debate. <laughs> He's, right. Uh, I... He's right. He's 100% correct. <laughs> oh, shucks, guys. So, um, all right. So, uh, it looks like, I think that's all the questions that we have. Uh, I just want to, if I miss one, feel free to put it in the next couple minutes while I'm uh, I'm doing a little wrapping up here. I just want to say that, um, do you like uh, do you like Dillahunty? Do you like Vila? Well, tune in Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern, because there's going to be a showdown tonight. We had the what? battle of the mustaches, but that'll be <laughs> definitely a good conversation to check out. And then Sunday. Don't forget, Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we will have a new person, Jim the Mustache Majors, versus S.J. Thomason on the resurrection. Yes, Isn't that that's the debate you need to be at. So that's one for the agents. And I, yes, and I'll be it, there. It's, it's probably the last time she debates me, so you just show up for it. <laughs> so I'll be there because I'll be moderating it. So. But that's going to be an awesome debate. Not only those, James has a lot of other cool debates that we haven't really like talked about yet uh, publicly. But there's a lot of interesting things coming down the pipeline. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure and do that now. And everybody who's here, there's like 150 people here. Hit that like button if you uh, thought that Jim or Gavin did well and you like seeing these kind of conversations. Um, and uh, sorry for the people who are just now getting in here. You um <laughs> you're, you you miss pretty much the whole thing. So uh doesn't like we have any other questions. So again, I just want to thank uh, everybody who showed up tonight. Thank to both of the uh, debaters for their time and uh, and uh, again consider subscribing and hitting that like button. And uh, thanks to James for making these things possible. Uh, Jim, Gavin, nice. I appreciate it. Yeah. Absolutely, nice, thank you guys nice, so much. Nice. Yeah, nice job, Jim. Nice job, CC. And so with, thank you, man. Yeah, I had a, had a, had a really, uh, really good time. And with that, yeah, anytime, keeps uh, keep sifting the reasonable.